everyone! Welcome back to another episode of Project Accounting. So our topic for today is all about posting transactions in the general ledger and preparing the trial balance. So for this episode, you will be able to post transactions from the journal to the ledger, prepare a trial balance and know the purposes it serves, and prepare correcting entries. Since na-discuss na natin yung analyzing business transactions and journalizing sa ating mga nakaraang episodes, pumunta naman tayo sa third and fourth step ng ating accounting cycle, which is yung posting and preparing trial balance. So yung entire group of accounts na minemaintain ng isang company is called the ledger. So pinapakita ng ledger yung balance in each of the accounts, pati na rin yung changes sa mga balances. So kung yung journal ay tinatawag na Book of Original Entry, ang ledger naman ay tinatawag na Book of Final Entry. Usually, yung mga companies, ina-arrange nila yung ledger in the sequence in which they present the accounts sa financial statements. Starting with the balance sheet account, so syempre first in order yung asset, then followed by liabilities, owner's capital, owner's drawings, revenues, and expenses. Tapos, each account is numbered for easier identification. So yung procedure of transferring journal entries to the ledger accounts is called posting. So itong step na to, it accumulates the effects of journalized transactions into individual accounts. So to illustrate yung posting process, gawin natin example yung transaction natin last episode. So on January 1, cash of 200,000 was received from Attorney Mendoza, the owner, as her initial investment. So, ni-record natin sa general journal yung transaction which is debit cash and credit H. Mendoza Capital amounting to 200,000. So, sa pag-post ng transaction sa ledger, ang first natin na need gawin is to locate in the ledger the debit and credit accounts in the journal entry. So, yung cash is under account number 101 at H. Mendoza Capital under account 301. So, after nating mahanap yung debit and credit accounts, Ilalagay naman natin yung date of transaction sa date column at sa posting reference column yung page ng journal from which the entry originates. So yung January 1, 2021, ilalagay natin sa date column ng ledger at ilalagay naman natin yung 1 sa posting reference column since yung transaction na nirecord natin sa general journal ay nasa page 1. Pagkatapos, irerecord na natin yung debit and credit amounts in their respective accounts as they appear in the journal. So, ilalagay natin sa ledger ng cash yung 200,000 sa debit, then 200,000 credit naman sa ledger ng H. Mendoza Capital. Then, ang last na gagawin natin is to enter sa posting reference column ng journal yung account number to which the amount was posted. Since pinost natin yung debit na 200,000 sa cash under account number 101, yun ang ilalagay natin na posting reference column sa general journal sa tapat ng cash. At 301 naman sa H. Mendoza Capital since pinost natin yung credit sa account number 301. So after ma-post yung mga journal entries sa ledger, yung amounts of debit and credit columns are total tapos yung difference between the amount of debit and credit is determined para malaman yung balance ng account. So for example, hetong ledger ng cash, ang total debits niya ay 230,000 while yung total credits naman niya ay 65,000. So, ang ending balance ng cash as of January 31, 2021 ay 165,000, which is 230,000 na debit minus yung 65,000 na credit. Take note na yung should be balance ng account must be in its normal balance. Para mas madaling tandaan, yung normal balance ng mga account is yung balance na kung saan mag-increase sila. So, for example, yung asset. Para mag-increase siya, i-debit. So, ang normal balance niya is debit. Ganon din ang drawing sa expense account. While yung liabilities, capital, at revenue account naman, yung normal balance nila is credit kasi doon sila mag increase Bakit ba importante malaman if yung mga account ay nasa normal balance? Kasi if yung account balance is not in its normal balance, it may indicate na baka may error sa pag-journalize or pag-post ng transactions. For example, kapag may credit balance sa office equipment, baka may error sa pag-journalize or sa pag-post ng transaction kasi ang normal balance ng asset is debit. Yung number and type of accounts may differ sa iba't ibang company depende sa gusto ng owner. For example, the owner may want a single account para sa lahat ng types of utility expense. 
Pero yung iba, pwedeng i-separate yung expense accounts for each type of utility such as gas, electricity, and water. So para may sinusundan ng mga pwedeng gamitin na accounts sa pag-journalize and pag-post ng transaction ng mga companies, gumagawa sila ng chart of accounts. This chart lists down the accounts and the account numbers para ma-identify yung location nila sa ledger. Usually, yung numbering system sa chart of accounts starts with the balance sheet accounts and follows with the income statement accounts. Gaya ng example natin dito. So after nating malaman yung ending balances ng each accounts, pwede na tayong mag-prepare ng trial balance. Trial balance is a list of accounts and their balances at a given time. Usually, nagpiprepare ng trial balance at the end of an accounting period at nakalist yung accounts in the order in which they appear sa ledger. So, yung debit balances appear in the left column and credit balances in the right column. And the totals of the two columns must equal. So, paano ba mag-prepare ng trial balance? Ilan sa mga steps in preparing ng trial balance are as follows. So, syempre, write the heading of the trial balance. So, syempre, una yung name of business or yung sole proprietor. Tapos, yung term na trial balance. At sa baba ng trial balance, yung date. Tapos, list the accounts with corresponding balances. Accounts should be arranged according sa pagkakasunod-sunod sa ledger. Tapos, isusulat naman yung mga balances either sa debit or credit column ng trial balance. So, syempre, kapag yung balance ng account is debit, isusulat sa debit column. Ganon din sa credit column. Then, add the debit and credit columns of the trial balance. Tapos, double rule or draw a double line under the total of both columns. The trial balance proves the mathematical equality of debits and credits after posting. However, kahit na equal yung trial balance, it does not provide a complete proof na tama yung accounting records kasi baka merong mga errors which do not affect the equality of trial balance. For example, pwede pa rin maging balance yung trial balance kahit na merong hindi ma-journalize at ma-post ng transaction, meron kang na-record na same transaction more than once, o kaya mali yung account na napostan mo pero same pa rin na nasa debit and credit siya. For example, ang na-record mo sa general journal ay debit to supplies pero napost mo siya sa account na equipment. O kaya naman, ni-record mo siya sa credit to accounts payable pero pinost mo sa notes payable. O kaya naman, na-offset na yung error dahil same lang naman yung amount na mali. Ano naman kaya ang pwedeng maging reason para hindi magbalansa yung trial balance? So it might be due to any of the following. So, baka mali yung pagkaka-add sa debit and credit column ng trial balance. Baka rin nun sa pag-prepare ng trial balance, yung debit balance ay nailagay sa credit column at vice versa. At baka merong hindi naka-normal balance. Baka rin na may balance sa ledger na mali yung pagkakalagay sa trial balance o kaya hindi nasama. O kaya naman, baka nung pag-post ay mali yung amount na nailagay sa account. At baka rin nun sa pag-post ay yung debit is nailagay sa credit or vice versa. So, anong gagawin if yung trial balance is hindi nag-balance? First is to determine yung amount of difference between sa two columns of the trial balance. After malaman yung differences, these steps are helpful. So, first, kung yung difference ay 1, 10, 100, or 1,000, i-read mo lang yung trial balance column at i-recompute yung balance. Tapos, kapag naman divisible by 2 naman, check mo yung trial balance baka may balance na equal sa kalahati ng error na nailagay sa wrong column. Kapag naman divisible by 3 or 9, check mo yung account balance sa trial balance baka mali na pagkakakopya sa ledger. For example, if yung balance is 12 and it was listed as 21, a 9 peso error has been made. And ang tawag sa mga ganitong error na napagbaliktad ng pagkakasulat ay transposition error. Kapag naman divisible by 2 or 9, check mo yung ledger baka may naumit ka sa trial balance o kaya naman check mo yung journal baka may hindi ka pa nakopost. So, na-figure out na natin kung saan ang galing yung error sa trial balance. Paano natin ito itatama? So, the procedure sa pag-correct ng error sa journalizing at posting will depend sa nature ng error at kailan will discover yung error. Kapag yung journal entry is incorrect pero hindi pa napopost, ang pwede mong kawin is to draw a line across the error tapos isusulat mo yung correct account title or yung amount dun sa maling account title at amount. Kapag naman tama yung journal entry pero mali ng pagkakapost, Draw a line across the error and post it correctly. Tapos, kapag yung journal entry is incorrect tapos na-post na siya, kailangan na natin mag-journalize and mag-post ng correcting entry. Hindi kasi pwede na magkaroon ng erasures kasi this may lead to suspicion sa fraud so correcting entry talaga dapat ang i-prepare sa mga ganitong error. 
So, to illustrate yung procedure sa pag-prepare ng correcting entry, magbigay tayo ng examples. On January 1, the company purchased for cash supplies worth 2,000 pesos. Transaction has been journalized and posted by debiting equipment and crediting cash. So, mas madaling i-analyze yung error by preparing the erroneous entry o yung maling entry na ginawa at yung should be entry or yung tamang journal entry. So, ang erroneous entry dito ay dinamit yung equipment kahit na ang binili ay supplies. Kasi, ang should be entry dapat dito ay debit supplies at credit cash. So, paano natin matatama yung erroneous entry? So, dapat tayo mag-debit ng supplies kasi yun naman talaga ang binili. So, dapat madagdagan ng supplies natin at dapat mag-credit ng equipment kasi wala namang binili equipment. So, dapat hindi tayo nag-debit ng equipment. Next example naman. A cash receipt of 8,900 from a customer on account has been erroneously recorded and posted as 9,800. So, dito naman, tama yung account na ginamit sa pag-record at pag-post, pero yung amount na ni-record at pinost yung mali. So, ang erroneous entry made is debit cash, 9,800, and credit accounts receivable, 9,800. Pero, ang should be entry natin is debit cash, 8,900, and credit accounts receivable, 8,900. So as you can see, sobrang ng 900 ang dinebit sa cash at yung kinredit sa accounts receivable. So para makorekto, we will debit yung accounts receivable kasi sobra yung nakredit. Tapos, ikikredit natin yung cash ng 900 kasi sobra yung nadebit na cash. So para may apply nyo yung mga napag-aralan natin today, I'll give problems para masolve nyo on your own at isasolve natin sabay-sabay next week. So problem solving 8-1. Jay opened a portrait studio on February 2021 and uses the following chart of accounts. The following were the transactions during the month. On February 1, began business by depositing 300,000 in the business checking account. On February 1, paid two months rent in advance for the studio amounting to 40,000. On February 2, bought photography equipment on account amounting to 100,000. On February 8, Purchased photography supplies for cash amounting to 30,000. On February 15, received cash for portraits amounting to 70,000. On February 16, billed customers for portraits amounting to 25,000. On February 21, paid for one half of the photography equipment purchased on February 2. On February 23, received payment from customers billed on December 16. On February 25, Jay withdrew cash for personal use amounting to 20,000 and on February 28, paid wages of employees amounting to 23,000. So the requirements are prepare and post the journal entries and prepare the trial balance. For problem solving 8-2, the following trial balance of Lavan Lang Laundry Shop does not balance. Each of the listed account has a normal balance per the general ledger. An examination of the ledger and the journal reveals the following errors. Number 1. Cash received from a customer in payment of its account was debited for 850 and accounts receivable was credited for the same amount. The actual collection was 580 pesos. Number 2. The purchase of a computer on account for 710 pesos was recorded as a debit to supplies for 710 and a credit to accounts payable for 710 pesos. Number 3. Services were performed on account for a client for 980 pesos. Accounts receivable was debited for 980 pesos and service revenue was credited for 98 pesos. Number 4. A debit posting to salaries and wages expense of 900 pesos was submitted. Number 5. A payment of a balance due for 306 pesos was credited to cash for 306 pesos and credited to accounts payable for 360 pesos. Number 6. The withdrawal of 600 pesos cash for owner's personal use was debited to salaries and wages expense for 600 pesos and credited to cash for 600 pesos. The requirement is to prepare a correct trial balance. So if you like this video or if this video helped you, please give a thumbs up and subscribe for more episodes. Thank you!